Hey guys, welcome back. I'm sorry I've been away for so long, but I'm happy to be recording again. We're going to be talking about the Blood Angels today. The Sons of Sanguinius, Protectors of Mankind. The Blood Angels are among the oldest and proudest of the Space Marine chapters. They are peerless heroes, noble protectors of humanity. Yet their outer glory hides souls riven with darkness and a curse that may yet spell their doom. From the earliest days of the Great Crusade, the Blood Angels made a name for themselves as loyal, courageous warriors. It was during the last days of the Horus Heresy, as the Imperium heaved with war and bloodshed, that a darkness crept into the Blood Angels' souls. The death of their Primarch Sanguinius left his sons afflicted with a spiritual sickness with which they struggle to this very day. Since that time, the Blood Angels and their successor chapters have fought on harder than ever. Cursed and diminishing year by year, the Blood Angels fight on regardless. If they are to die out, then these selfless heroes mean to do as much good as they can before they fall, and to leave a legacy as glorious as that of their Primarch. Blood Angels The Blood Angels are a hard-hitting army, and one that stands out on the tabletop with their ornate red, gold, and black arms and armor. These Sons of Sanguinius combined their advanced weaponry and genetically enhanced might of other Space Marine forces with a speed and aggression that is all their own. Led by mighty heroes and potent psychers, their attacks spearheaded by the black armored brothers of the Death Company, the Blood Angels overwhelm their foes, annihilating enemy forces in the Emperor's name. The Angelic Host The Blood Angels have always been staunch defenders of the Imperium. Yet, for all their accomplishments, they suffer from a fatal flaw. The Blood Angels carry an inner darkness that they must strive constantly to resist. It is this struggle that defines them, as much in their glorious moments of victory as in their darkest hours of despair. Created during the first founding by the artifice of the Emperor himself, the Blood Angels occupied the vanguard of the Great Crusade, aiding the Emperor in his bid to reunite humanity. Even then their deeds were heroic in the extreme, the Legion's battle brothers exemplifying the best that the Adeptus Astartes had to offer. However, the Blood Angels' accomplishments reached new heights after they were reunited with their Primarch, Sanguinius. Angel-winged and beautiful in both body and mind. Sanguinius was arguably the greatest of his father's sons. <laughs> A mighty warrior and inspiring leader, Sanguinius's glory was that of a demigod, and his sons followed him with unquestioning devotion. All through the days of the Great Crusade and into the dark madness of the Horus Heresy, the Blood Angels fought at this Primarch's side, at their Primarch's side. Indeed, inspired by Sanguinius's divine presence, the Blood Angels remained staunch in the Emperor's defense to the very end. Their boulders blazed from the ramparts of the Imperial Palace, even as the War Master came to seize their father's throne, and the Blood Angels were amongst the first loyalists to know of Chaos's defeat when Horus fell to the Emperor's wrath. That conflict was to cost the Blood Angels dear, however. In the final desperate attack upon Horus, 
Cyrus's battle barge, the vengeful spirit. Sanguinius was slain in battle with the war master himself. His death was but one of many blows that the Imperium suffered on that dreadful day, yet for the Blood Angels it was the most tragic by far. Sanguinius' sons shared a uniquely potent bond with their gene sire, and though the damage was not immediately evident, his death was to scar the Blood Angels in both flesh and spirit forevermore. It was the death of the Primark that is believed to have triggered the onset of the Red Thirst. A terrible flaw within the Legion's gene seed, this curse spread slowly through the Blood Angels and their successor chapters. It tainted them with madness in the millennia that followed, a sorrowful secret that undermined their every valorous deed. Flawed Heroes The Blood Angels and their successor chapters are renowned for their willingness to charge headlong into the guns of the foe. They will face down the most suicidal odds, and their hunger for engaging in hand-to-hand -hand combat is well known. Some observers have taken these traits to indicate that the Blood Angels are over-eager for battle, that they are somehow foolhardy, ill disciplined or even tainted. The truth is both more tragic and far nobler. The flaw in the Blood Angel's gene seed drives them to excesses of rage and violence that must constantly be controlled. However, it is a mark of shame amongst the Blood Angels to give in to the Red Thirst in any but the most dire of circumstances. Consequently, the chapter's battle brothers continually strive to better themselves, fighting to master the rage inside and embody the noble ideals of their fallen Primarch. Yet no amount of self-control can preserve the sons of Sanguinius from the terrible madness known as the Black Rage. On the eve before battle, a blood angel may find himself gripped by apocalyptic visions. The sanity of the afflicted is smashed to shards by a sudden sensory bombardment, plunging him into a worsening spiral of blood madness from which death is the only release. It is almost inevitable that this fate will eventually overtake every blood angel, the onset of madness more a matter of when than if. In the face of this stark reality, every blood angel seeks to know a glorious death in battle, rather than face the slow decline into bestial madness. A troubled legacy. The Blood Angels' heritage is not altogether a sorrowful one. They carry much of Sanguinius' grace and nobility within themselves, and his physical perfection is echoed by their own. In addition, in ever more numerous cases, the psychic strength of the Primarch flows in his descendants' veins. Consequently, the Blood Angels are amongst the most physically, excuse me, the most psychically gifted of all the Space Marine chapters. The power of the Blood Angels librarians flows from the chapter's conflicted duality. One moment it will manifest itself in angelic miracles, the next in savage explosions of bloodthirsty brutality. Blood Angels librarians can as easily use their minds to shield the innocent from danger as they can to tear the blood from their enemies' bodies in an exsanguinary storm. It is to the Blood Angels' credit that these formidable psychic abilities remain under their control and are used purely for the good of the Imperium at large. Good intentions only go so far, however, 
especially in a time as dark as this. The Blood Angels and their successors, for all their nobility, are chapters in decline. Each year brings a deepening of the madness, a worsening of the curse within their blood. Among some successor chapters, this phenomenon is especially pronounced, for their gene seed was harvested at, the t at a time when the flaw had already become aggressively pronounced. Tales abound of whole chapters slipping slowly into blood-mad insanity, edging ever closer to the precipice as their inner darkness gains control. Names such as the Knights of Blood or the Crimson Swords have gone down in infamy, declared renegade by the Adeptus Terra, or completely wiped out amid unwinnable conflicts of their own creation. Indeed, were any chapter to have fallen to the ruinous powers, it should surely have been the Blood Angels. Their genetic curse, coupled with their powers of warp craft, would seem to make them prime candidates. There are those amongst the Inquisition who are only too quick to make such assertions, and who watch Sanguinius' sons keenly for signs of their inevitable fall. Yet the Blood Angels have remained loyal to the core for ten thousand years. They harbor no more intent toward heresy now than they did on the day the War Master fell from grace. Though they still stand proud, the Blood Angels are far from untouched by the creeping degeneration that afflicts their successors. The chapter must work harder and harder to maintain its fighting strength, for new recruits are lost just as frequently to the Black Rage as our veterans. Meanwhile, more battle brothers than ever are choosing glorious death over ignominious madness, their reckless sacrifices leaving those who remain spread thinner still. Worse is the intensifying of the Black Rage itself. Once the chapter would lose perhaps a handful of battle brothers to this phenomenon in any given campaign, now it is not unheard of for whole formations to plunge into madness, and the struggle to replace them becomes more pronounced with each fresh conflict the Blood Angels face. Yet if the Blood Angels are to diminish and disappear, they do not intend to do so quietly. They are amongst the most celebrated of humanity's heroes, and are determined to be remembered as such. It may be that future generations recall them only as a legend, that they face imminent that they face imminent extermination, either by foes or by the flaw within themselves. If that should be the case, the Blood Angels mean to leave behind a shining legacy that will inspire mankind's remaining defenders by its example. The sons of Sanguinius may be called upon to meet their glorious end sooner rather than later. Greater and more terrible threats gather about the Imperium's borders with every passing year. Now one of these reaches out from the darkness towards the Blood Angel's homeworld, Ball. The Tyranids, a rapacious alien race that consumes all in its path, are advancing towards Ball with a depthless hunger. Creeping ever closer, a vast tendril of hive fleet leviathan unfurls from the void, enfolding and devouring one planet after another. All across the star cluster known as the Red Scar, worlds of the Imperium are fighting and dying as the Tyranids descend upon them in their billions. Soon it must surely be the turn of Baal to see its skies darken and its defenders cut off by the swarms. When that time comes, the sons of Sanguinius will face a fight for survival, one from which they must emerge triumphant, or not at all. Origins of the Blood Angels 
the Space Marine Legions were the creations of the Emperor of Mankind. This deific being crafted incredible warriors to help him conquer the galaxy. Amongst these legions were the Blood Angels, who from their earliest days fought staunchly in the service of Emperor and Primarch both. Like all the great Space Marine legions, the Blood Angels were born from the dying flames of the Age of Strife. The Risen Emperor had united the warring factions of Terra, yet his vision did not end with one mere planet, nor even with the solar system in which it lay. His goal was nothing less than the reunification of scattered mankind, to bring the sundered worlds and realms of humanity under a single beneficent rule. To do this, he would need a mighty army, an army unlike any the galaxy had ever seen. An army whose warriors knew no other loyalty than to their emperor, and whose bodies and minds were hardened to withstand unceasing war. So were the space marines created. The emperor had long ago refined the techniques of genetic manipulation, and he set these skills to work once again forging twenty extraordinary super-warriors to be his generals in the coming campaign. Thus were born the Primarchs of the Space Marine Legions, incredible beings whose martial powers were to be second only to the Emperor himself. Yet, as with all great labors, the genesis of the Space Marines did not go entirely according to design. The Emperor's plan for his Primarchs was to be undone, even before it had properly begun. Without warning, the Primarchs disappeared, scattered throughout the galaxy by an unknown force. The Great Crusade Though the loss of the Primarchs was a bitter blow, the Emperor was not dismayed for long. The Primarchs themselves could not be recreated, but their genetic records remained, and from these the Emperor created the mighty Space Marine Legions, the armies he had always intended his Primarchs to lead. It was at the head of the Space Marine Legions that the Emperor began his great crusade in earnest. Setting out from Terra, the Emperor led the Space Marines on a glorious campaign that sought to restore mankind to greatness. No foe could withstand the onslaught of the Great Crusade. Despots, aliens, and demons all fell to the relentless advance of the Space Marine Legions. Worlds previously enslaved and terrorized, flocking willingly to the banner of the nascent Imperium. It was in the course of the Great Crusade that the lost Primarchs were at last reunited with their Emperor, taking up their rightful places as the masters of the Space Marine Legions. No mere warriors were the Primarchs. They were also shrewd and canny leaders of men, under whose command the righteous might of the Space Marine Legions increased a hundredfold. So it was that the Great Crusade surged onwards as never before. New battlefronts opened up under the Primarch's direction, and worlds were reclaimed by the thousand. Throughout it all, the Blood Angels and their Primarch, Sanguinius, fought at the Emperor's side, serving as honor guard to their beloved creator. Driven by fiery temperament, the Blood Angels swiftly earned a fearsome reputation as shock troops, which came to feed a rivalry between them and the World Eater's Legion. Yet, in truth, the Blood Angels were never as ferocious as the World Eaters, for the wise influence of Sanguinius tempered their bloodlust. Though he was yet in the early days of his legend, Sanguinius was thought to be the noblest of the Primarchs, and was ever deep in the Emperor's council. 
Even Horus, proud war master of the Great Crusade and Primarch of the Luna Wolves, sensed a purity of spirit in Sanguinius that he could never match, a oneness with their father that no other Primarch could ever hope to approach. Whilst many of his brothers fought the Great Crusade solely out of the joy of battle, Sanguinius fought to secure the golden era of peace and prosperity which would surely follow. His vision was the Emperor's, a hope of mankind united in peace and prosperity. Alas, it was not to be. And that's where we're going to end this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. And I want to say thank you to everyone who has not only stuck with me, but uh, subscribed despite the fact that I have not released a video in three months. Um, so thank you everyone for sticking with me and I'm hoping I'm back. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.